Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. So in the last video we created this fake shopping repository here, which will be very useful to test our view model that we don't have yet. So what I want to do in this video first, before we test our actual view model, is to create our architectural skeleton. So that means we will create our three fragments that we will have on this app. On the one hand, our shopping fragment, which will just display the list of shopping items. Then we will have an add shopping item fragment in which we can add a new shopping item and we will have an image pick fragment in which we can simply search for images in the Pixabay API and select one of these images to display in our add shopping item fragment. So let's actually start to do that. Let's create a UI package here in our main package um, called UI. And inside of this UI package, we first want to drag our main activity into that UI package, click on refactor, and then we are going to create a new Kotlin file class instead of that package, which will be called shopping fragment. Select class here. It will inherit from fragment, of course. And we can specify the layout um, resource for that fragment, which is r. Import r here dot layout dot fragment shopping. Then we can copy and paste this fragment. This time for the add shopping item fragment. Just swap out the layout ID for fragment add shopping item and paste it one more time here for our image pick fragment. And press enter here and swap this out for fragment image pick. Okay, so the next step is to create our view model. And in this project, we will actually share one view model over all of our fragments. So I think uh, because that is not a really big project here, that is totally fine that we use the same view model for each of our fragments. If you have a bigger project, then I would recommend to have individual view models for each fragment. But in this project, that should be fine. So also in our UI package, we can create a new Kotlin fellow class. Select class here, and that will be our shopping view model. Press enter. That will inherit from view model, of course. And now we actually want to inject our repository into this view model. So what we will do is we will use Dagger Hills annotation at view model inject constructor and import view model inject here, pressing Alt plus Enter. And now we actually want to create the repository here. So private val repository, which is of type shopping repository. And now you can see why we actually created that interface in the last video, that shopping repository interface. Because now we can specify that our shopping view model just takes a shopping repository as a parameter and not a default shopping repository. Because if we make it like that with that interface, we can on the one hand pass our default shopping repository here in the constructor. And on the other hand, we can also pass our fake shopping repository for our tests in the very same view model. So we don't need an additional view model just for our test cases. Next, I actually want to paste a class here that is also very useful, very similar to the resource class we had in the last video. This one here. Um, we will have another class here called event. So maybe you know that I will just paste it here because that is again a class that is um, the same on all of your projects. And you will see that is not very complicated that class, but it's also a generic class. And the purpose why we have that class is to basically make our live data emit one time events. So we often have the problem that we make a network request to our server. And then with that resource class, we either emit success or error in the end. So the actual live data object holds either a success resource or an error resource. And the problem with that is, let's say we emit an error resource and we show a snack bar that an error occurred. Then if we rotate our device, that would mean that the live data would automatically emit again. And we would again show that snack bar even though the event already passed. And that is why we have that event class here. So we can basically just create a generic class with some content. And it has that Boolean has been handled, which is false initially. And that means if we call this get content if not handled function, that will only return this content the first time this function is called. And afterwards, you can see has been handled will be set to true. And 
if that is true, we will simply return null here. So only um, the first time we call that function, we will actually emit the content here. And if we call it the second time, we will simply get a null response. And if you've never used that class before, then uh, this is probably confusing for you right now. That is fine. You don't need to understand that right now, but it will definitely get clearer when we actually implement that in practice. But we just need that class here for the live data objects we create in our view model right now. So let's actually go back to that view model here, our shopping view model, and create our live data object and our function signatures. And yes, I only create the function signatures here because as you know, we apply TDD principles here in this tutorial. So that means for unit tests and the tests for our view models will be unit tests. They only test components of our view model and not any interaction between fragment and view model. So because those are unit tests, we actually first implement the function signature and then we implement the unit tests and then we implement the actual functions so that our created unit tests pass. So on the one hand, we will just have very simple live data objects here for our fragment that is on the one hand our shopping items live data. So just the live data that emits the list of shopping items from our database. So well, shopping items, and that is just equal to repository dot observe all shopping items. Then we will have another very simple live data here for the total price, which is equal to repository dot observe total price. So for the other live data objects we will have here, we actually have to write some functionality. So first of all, I want to create a live data here for our image responses. So if we make a request to our Pixabay API, then we of course get a list of um, images that matched our search keyword. And we want to um, have a live data that holds the, that list of responses. So what I will do is I will create a private val underscore images and that is also a best practice you should use here uh, that you make your actual mutable live data in your view model um, private so you can only change those from within the view model and then we will create another live data which is just a plain live data object not a mutable live data object which will set equal to this underscore images live data and that is immutable so from the outside from our fragment we can actually only access the immutable live data and that is just the best practice you see everywhere in the repositories by Google and by other good people. So first of all, we actually want to set that images underscore images live data to a new mutable live data of type event. So here you can see our event class comes into play um, of type event of type resource of type image response. And we just call the construct on that one. And now, as I said, we will also have an immutable live data here, which will be a public live data. So val images without an underscore. And we set that actually we need to specify the type here, which is live data. So not mutable live data, just a live data of type event um, resource image response. And we just set that equal to our underscore images live data. So that is the actual live data we will observe in our fragment. And that means since we explicitly declared that this is a live data here, not a mutable live data, that just means we cannot post a new value to this live data from our fragment. So we can only post values to this from our view model to this live data because that is private. Okay, so what else do we have? We can actually copy that, those two lines here. Paste them below. Uh, that will be a live data for our current image URL. So when we actually select an image from our recycler view later on after we searched for images, then we are just interested in the current image URL. So the image URL of the image we clicked on so that we can use Glide or image loading library to show that image in our add shopping item fragment so that we can basically when we create our actual shopping item that we can attach that image to that just created item. And for that, we will just have a live data object here. So underscore current image URL, uh, that will be just a mutable live data of type string. So the URL, and that will be current image URL without an underscore, also of type string. And we of course don't set that equal to images, instead to underscore current image URL. 
And now we will have one more pair of live data objects here. Make a little space actually, which will be underscore insert shopping item status. So basically we will have an insert function here in our view model in which we will just validate the input of all our edit text. So basically if the name is valid, if the amount is valid and all that stuff. And depending on that, we will just post a resource status we can observe on in our fragment. So that will actually be a live data of type event resource of shopping item. So the actual item we want to insert. And then we can copy that, paste it here without an underscore and replace this with shopping item again and set that equal to underscore insert shopping item status. Okay, so and now let's come to the functions of that view model here. On the one hand, uh, that will be a function set current image URL, which will just post a new value to our image URL live data and that will take a URL as a parameter which is of type string. And actually that is only a single line here. So in this case, we don't just leave it with the function signature here. Instead, we will just use our current image URL with an underscore and post the value URL here. And then we will have two functions on the one hand, one function to delete a shopping item which we will pass as a parameter here. And that will also just be equal to view model scope dot launch. And we use our repository to delete that shopping item. And we actually already tested that functionality to delete something in our database. So that is also fine. And the same for inserting an item into the database. So without without validating the input, just inserting an item into the database after validation. So val insert item or insert shopping item into db. Also pass that as a parameter, set that equal to view model scope dot launch in which we just use our repository and insert that item. Then we will have a function insert shopping item. So not into the database right now. That is the function that will actually validate the user input. So that will take some parameters on the one hand, the name of the shopping item. On the other hand, the amount, which is a string here. So I will pass that actually as a string. So exactly the string that we just read from the edit text field. And inside of this function, we will just validate that. And then afterwards create a shopping item where we convert that to an actual integer and insert that item with this function into our database if the input is valid. And we will have the same for our actual price. So price string, which is also a string here. And then we can just open up the function body here. But as I said, for this function, since this will be quite big, we won't write the implementation right now because we want to write the actual test case first. And the same counts for our last function instead of this shopping view model, which will be a function to search for image. And it, that will take an image query, which is a string as a parameter. And that will just search in our API for images. And we will also leave that empty for now. Okay, uh, then let's actually switch to our constants file here because I want to create two constants that we will need in our view model later on. And we need those constants also for the test cases. So on the one hand, a const val max name length. So uh, the maximum allowed character count or shopping item name can have, which I will set to 20. And we will have a const val for the max price length, which I will set to 10. So we allow prices with 10 digits at most, which I think is actually enough here. You can increase that. But actually, if you're not a programming YouTuber, then there is no way somebody can afford that. Okay, and the next little change we need to do is in our DI package in our app module, 
um, we actually don't provide our default shopping repository for our uh, um, view model. Normally, we wouldn't need to do that because Dagger knows how to create such a default shopping repository because it has that DAO object and that API here, which it needs for that. But since we um, pass such a shopping repository interface in our shopping view model constructor, Dagger will actually look if we provide such an interface and it doesn't know how to create that. So what we actually need to do is we need to write a provides function here, which will just create a default shopping repository and cast that to such a shopping repository interface. So actually add singleton and add provides function provide default shopping repository, which will take on the one hand our DAO, which is of type shopping DAO. And on the other hand, our API, which is of type Pixabay API. And that will just return a default shopping repository, which will take our DAO and our API. And as I said, we cast that as a shopping repository now. So now we can actually just instantiate this view model in all of our fragments, which is the last step for this video. Let's start in our shopping fragment, override on view created, and create a late init var view model here, which is of type shopping view model. And in here we will create that view model by writing view model is equal to view model provider, which will take the owner. Here we pass require activity because we want to bind this view model to our activity so that it survives if our fragments are destroyed since we share that view model between all of our fragments. And we call a dot get shopping view model double colon class dot Java. Then we can actually copy that line because it will be the same in all of our fragments. Okay, we can actually copy this whole block here and switch to our add shopping item fragment. Just paste this here. Go to our image pick fragment and paste it one more time. So that's it for this video. We prepared everything we needed to prepare to test our actual view model. And that is what we will do in the next video. So please, if you enjoyed this video, give it a like, comment below what you think about this. And also, if, you're, if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, then quickly make sure to do that. Click on the subscribe button. It's only a single click and you will get regular Android content every second day. See you in the next video. Have a great day. Bye bye.